was this kind of guerrilla uh, journalism where if you went to a dangerous area, you would stay so briefly that people didn't have time uh, to realize you were there and, and come and attack you. So it was kind of whirlwind reporting, going in, talking to the camera, disappearing. This picture is November 2004. It's on a forward operating base outside of Samara, Iraq. I was in Baghdad again at that point. And there had been an incident nearby involving U.S. troops and insurgents, and there had been a lot of people killed, and there were a lot of questions about what had actually happened. So the challenge in that story was that we wanted to show where the incident happened. But at that point, uh, any Americans, any journalists, were in danger of being uh, shot, attacked by insurgents. There was a, at that point, uh, the insurgency was really, really powerful and menacing. So wearing my bulletproof flak jacket and with a wireless microphone already attached, I, I rehearsed what I wanted to say. We got out of the, the, the SUV, camera rolling. I talked to the, to the camera, did it a couple of takes, and we were back in before anybody knew we, we'd been there. I think one of the things you have to realize when you're covering a war is that you can't let the fear uh, paralyze you. You have to keep your wits about you. You've got to be able to do your job. I used to think about it as sort of compartmentalizing it. I used to say I put my, my fear and anxiety in a box when I arrived, shoved it under my bed metaphorically and, and uh, back in the compound where we worked. Uh, and just got on with the job. Uh, you know, nobody forced me to do this. I, I, I knew that it was just, it was the job. And I think that's what anybody in that, in, you know, in the, that kind of circumstance does. You just have to focus on the job. And uh, otherwise you let the fear uh, over, overwhelm you and you can't function.